at email. We're outlook at bbc.com. We've got to take a short break. When we come back, we'll have stories from an artist's workshop in Mexico. Stay with us. Now on the BBC World Service, we look at the role of robots in education and elderly care in Singapore and Japan. I'm Marie Goy. I'll be visiting both countries to hear how robots are rapidly becoming a part of daily life. Did you build him? Yes, yeah, I did. Yeah. And I can program it. Here in Singapore, I've been hearing more and more about robots appearing in classrooms like the one my four-year-old daughter is attending. It is very important that a child who wants to survive in the future economy knows things like coding and robotics right now. If you don't know these basic things, you probably won't get a job anywhere. And back in Japan, where my parents still live, robots are increasingly being used to take care of the elderly. There's simply not enough young Japanese people who want to do that kind of work. So the lady is asking the dog robot whether it's having fun. Robo Life at bbcworldservice.com slash documentaries. Hello again. We're not done yet on Outlook. Still to come, the Mexican painter who went blind but continued to paint. There was a time, like maybe a month or two, after, right after I became blind, when I thought it was over. I must have thought it was over, but now it seems so small. Like now it seems like not even a question. Like this is what I need to do. This is what I came here to do. And that dog story we promised is coming up too after a summary of news. BBC News with Jerry Smith. The European Commission President, Jean-Claude Juncker, has called for China to allow EU businesses greater access to its markets. The demand came following talks in Paris between the Chinese leader Xi Jinping and European leaders, who appear to be taking a harder stance towards an increasingly powerful China. The European Parliament has approved a draft law designed to protect copyright on the Internet in the face of fierce opposition from the Internet giants. The main author, Axel Foss, told lawmakers in Strasbourg that the measure would ensure fair payment for creators of content that's shared on the Internet. Opponents said the measure would force Internet platforms to block copyright content regardless of legitimate uses. The International Energy Agency says emissions of carbon dioxide from energy production, the main contributor to global warming, have risen to an all-time high. The higher energy use was due to a robust global economy and greater demand for cooling and heating. The authorities in Iran say the number of dead as a result of a week of flash floods has risen to 21. Much of Iran has been hit by extreme weather. There have been strong reactions in the European Parliament to efforts by British MPs to take greater control of Brexit. The Belgian Liberal, Philippe Lambert, said the British Prime Minister Theresa May lacked the basic human skills required of a political leader. Europe's football governing body, UEFA, has opened disciplinary proceedings against Montenegro after racist abuse was reportedly directed at England players during a match in the capital, Podgorica. Racist chanting was heard from home fans. And a detective in the Netherlands, nicknamed the Indiana Jones of the art world, has tracked down a Picasso painting that disappeared 20 years ago. Bustafam was stolen on the French Riviera. BBC News. Hello, welcome back to Outlook on the BBC World Service. I'm Neil Rizal. Coming up, a helicopter rescue of Ben the dog after two days stranded atop a Scottish mountain. The winch operator happened to spot this little dog in an orange jacket sat on a ledge. He was so lucky for a, a small dog to be out for 48 hours in weather that on the second night was incredibly stormy and well below minus. He was very, very lucky. I promise we will get to that soon. But first, to an artist's studio in Mexico City, home of painter Manuel Solano. Solano's work has been seen in big galleries around the world, but the artist does never get to see them in the way that most people would understand, because Solano is legally blind. So how does a person paint when they can't see the canvas? Outlook's Saskia Edwards went to find out. I find Manuel in their workshop in Mexico City. Well, I'm trying to find them. Yeah, I went up two flights of stairs. It's kind of like a gray building. Of course, Manuel replies, I wouldn't know what color the paint of the building is. Of course 
Which, well, first of all, I feel stupid for saying that, but second of all, it's the first realization of how strange it is for a painter to not even know the color of the paint around them every day.